Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this lecture, I'm going to compute the transfer function of a passive two-pole bandpass filter used in the Wien Bridge oscillator. I'm now pretty sure it's Wien as in Wiener. If I recall correctly, I mispronounced this wine in one of my previous videos, and a bunch of people corrected me on it. The Wienbridge oscillator puts this filter in the feedback loop of an amplifier using positive feedback to generate the oscillation. I recently ran across this kind of thing again when I was looking at the schematic for the Boss SP1 Spectrum pedal, which uses this kind of positive feedback configuration, but it has it set below the point of oscillation, so it just acts as a bandpass filter. In the video I made on the topic, I noted that I hadn't seen this filter used this way anywhere else, and somebody left a comment noting that it does appear in the book Small Signal Audio Design by Douglas Self. Since then, I've learned it's also used in the DoD 440 envelope filter pedal. In the Boss SP1 pedal, the resistors in the filter are replaced with variable resistors, standard potentiometers, whereas in the DoD 440 pedal, the resistors consist of regular fixed resistors combined with light-dependent resistors, and they use the current flowing through an LED shining on these light-dependent resistors in order to change the center frequency of the filter. The filter is a voltage divider where there's a resistor and capacitor in series in the upper leg of the divider and a resistor and a capacitor in parallel in the lower leg of the divider. So we're going to measure the output over here and the input over here. And if I wanted to be precise with this, I should indicate that there's an ideal voltage source that's providing the input voltage. Quite often, we'll just write VI here without explicitly drawing this voltage source. And we know that by convention, this is an ideal voltage source that's driving the filter. In all the applications of this filter that I've seen, the resistances have the same value and the capacitances have the same value. All right, so the transfer function for this is going to be that of a voltage divider. But first, let me compute what this parallel combination of this resistor and this capacitor are. So let's see, I'll have R times 1 over Cs, the Laplace domain impedance of the capacitor, all over R plus 1 over Cs. And let's see, I want to clear out that fraction to make my life a little easier. So I'll write this as R over R Cs plus 1. All right, so over here, when I write this voltage divider, I'll have R over RCS plus one. And then down here, I'll have R over RCS plus one plus R plus one over CS from that series combination. All right, so I would like to clear out the fractions here. And so let me first multiply everything by CS, just to get rid of that. So I'll write RCS over RCS plus 1. And then I'll have all of this over R over RCS plus 1 plus RCS plus 1. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot something. There should be a CS here. All right. Now let's get rid of the RCS plus 1 subfractions here. Let me put some dots here to indicate that this is something else. So we'll say equal RCS in the numerator all over RCS. And then what do I have here? Well, I would have RCS plus 1 times itself. So I square that. All right. RCS all over. I know everybody's favorite game. Watch Lanterman do algebra. All right. So this is a parenthesis, not a C, right? Wait a minute. I did forget a C here, though. Okay, there's a C here. Sorry, I'm kind of making a mess of this. Anyway, R squared, C squared, S. And then I'm going to have a 2 RCS here. But I'm also adding an RCS, so I'll write 3 RCS and then plus 1. All right, so let me divide everything here by R squared, C squared. So I'll have S over RC, 
in the numerator. And then I'll have s squared. Oh, I forgot a squared here. All right. See, if I was a more diligent professor, I would go back and do all of this perfectly from the beginning, but I'm not so diligent. Anyway, I'll have 3 over RCS plus 1 over, let me write this as RC squared. So I have a couple of poles. I have one zero at the origin. So this has our canonical bandpass filter form. Now, as a bit of a sanity check, let's think about what happens at the extremes. At DC, these capacitors look like open circuits. So you have a path here through this resistor to ground. So you get nothing at DC. Whereas at a very high frequency, these capacitors look like shorts. And here you have a direct connection to ground. Okay, so in our canonical filter form, this last term here is omega n squared. So the natural frequency of this bandpass filter, the center frequency, the peak frequency, is going to be 1 over Rc. And then this term next to it, that corresponds to the damping ratio zeta omega n times 2. So I could equate 3 over Rc with 2 zeta omega n, and omega n here is 1 over Rc, so that gives me 3 equal to zeta, so zeta is equal to 3 halves, or 1.5. Now, if I wanted to express this in terms of a quality factor q, q is 1 over 2 zeta, so that would be 1 over 2 times 3 halves. The 2s here cancel, and that would give me 1 third. Let's see. The last thing I'm curious about here is what is the frequency response at the natural frequency at the peak? So we will plug in J omega, our frequency of interest, for S to get the frequency response. So that's J over RC. And I think this is probably clearest to think about if we use this form here. So I'll have RC and then J over RC, and then these cancel. So I'll just have J up here. And similarly down here, I'll have R squared, C squareds canceling once I plug things in here. And the J is going to be squared, so I'll have a minus 1. And then, let's see here, again, RC will cancel with an RC, so I'm just left with plus 3. And then I have a plus 1 here. Oh, wait, I also have a J here when I plug this in. So the J's wind up canceling, and I'll wind up with 1 third. So this has a phase of zero and a magnitude of one-third at the peak.